So I'm going to talk about uh, Quinn and Waylon, which is a topic that if you had asked me one year ago that I would be talking about Quinn and Waylon, uh, I would have said, well, that's impossible. You're crazy. And yet here, here I am doing it from, from my home, which is something I would have said it was impossible as well last year. But well, that's 2020 for you, right? Now, all right. I think Big Blue Button doesn't like when I add I add emoji to the to the slides, but well, in this slide, what I was saying is that my name is Alish. I am a, a KDE developer. I have been for over a decade. I am a, the KDE president, and I work for Blue Systems, where who sponsors me to do uh, um, quite a bit of KDE development. Um, and I am based in Barcelona, in the lovely Mediterranean coast. Now. Um, since I am new to Queen, many of you are as well, I figured it would uh, make sense to start with a bit of history because we're talking about Queen, which is a project that is uh, from the, well, very old. And Waylon is, well, not that old. So it means that how is it possible that these two are so entangled together right now? Uh, you, like As you can see here, this is the first uh, recorded um, commit that we have right now in Quinn that says, say hello to Quinn. Warning, not usable yet. See Redme from Matthias Etrich, um, who was the founder of, of KD. Um, that was from 1999, but not 1996, which is when we uh, consider that KD starts, remember, 25 years uh, this year. And that is because uh, Quinn got moved from KWM, K Window Manager, at some point. Um, just an anecdote, I guess. Then uh, after a, a lot of time, and when all of these three people that we, I had on the last slide were not already contributing to uh, Queen and mostly KD anymore, the uh, Martin Graslin uh, took over the project. And uh, among all of the work he did, uh, he started also porting to Queen and uh, adopting it to make it a uh, uh, good future so solution for uh, for Plasma. Now, what did it mean? Uh, Queen was an X11 compositor, and it slowly started uh, also being able to talk to, to Wayland. And right now, you can see that you can start your Plasma session from uh, into X11, or you can start your Plasma session into Wayland. And they will be mostly largely the same. You would you should have more or less the same features. You should have more or less the same uh, behavior uh, with as uh, small differences that are due to the protocol and how everything works. But um, that's when it all started for for Wedan in Queen. That was 2013, like we can see here. Now, uh, before we start looking into uh, why Queen is so important for KDE, I thought that it would it would it made sense to um, well reflect a bit on why Wayless is important and why uh, people are are uh, well working on it, and we keep hearing about this despite that. Well, admittedly, not every of us are are using it yet, although I am, by the way. Um, First reason I, I think that is super important is that it's simpl it's simplicity. And now you can say, wait a second, how is it that it's taking you so far seven years if it's so much simpler? Well, for starters, when that happened, we had been working on X11 for 20 years. And uh, then there's a lot of the complexity that is part of X11, that is part of the X server that is happening somewhere else. So X11 has the advantage, so to speak, that it's more complex, but then it's developed for, by other people and uh, somewhere where we get to share the, well, the work. So it kind of feels like it's uh, less complex. But as a user, uh, what you have running on your system on Wayland is uh, much simpler. Now, people keep telling me, like, so, oh, you want to move to Whale, and what am, am I going to do with my super old computer? That's never going to be able to embrace a new technology. And well, my obligation over there, over there is there's no reason to have this kind of concern, because Whalen is simpler, in fact. Uh, you don't have need to have 
uh, the communication between, well, Quinn and the X server uh, in two different processes. And we can have everything in Quinn or all the other compositors. There's many others as well, by the way, like you will know Matter for GNOME, there's Sway and Western, which is a reference implementation. All of them we are implementing, well, this Wayland. And actually this Wayland, what we mean about Wayland is a set of protocols that are implemented through a library called libwayland, very imaginative. Uh, and these protocols do what you would expect actually to be doing uh, and communicating between each application and well, the operating system, right? Like the application needs to know about all of the mouse input. The application will need to know all about the keyboard input. The application will need to be able to send uh, images to present on the on the screen. This is the information that is being shared through the the, the, the Wayland protocols. Um, in X11, this used to be done between the application and the X server, and the X server would send all of its information to everyone, and including Quid, and Quid would uh, do work on top of that. And this actually leads us to the to the second point, which is uh, security. Uh, in Quid, uh, Wayland, we get to have a tighter uh, control over what information is sent to each of the clients of the applications. In in terms of of Wayland semantics, a client and an application is basically the same. In fact, Wayland doesn't know about uh, applications, knows about clients, right? Now, since it's uh, Quinn who decides who gets what, us from Plasma, we get to have the, the decision of this application needs to know about, for example, when was the mouse used last, uh, but not every application needs to know it, right? Uh, things like uh, a keylogger, for example, would be trivial or are trivial to implement in uh, X11 on Wayland. It shouldn't be uh, at all. There's ways to prevent that. For example, uh, the Flatpak uh, sandboxing system has uh, created or adds a proxy between the clients and uh, and the um, and the compositor to make sure that these applications don't do it. But then it needs to be done ad hoc, right? In in Wayland, we'll get to do it. And actually, we don't need to have a separate component. Part of the big um, advantage that uh, Wayland is giving us is that we are the ones who decide. So as Plasma, without having to rely on other components to uh, do smart things, we get to pick and choose, which is which is very important because well, if you were in my talk yesterday, I was talking about uh, products, about having a good overall view of what um, what we're delivering to our users. I was talking about uh, making sure that if something doesn't work, we get to fix it. Uh, and we've all been at this point in our lives when we've seen uh, something that wasn't working that well on X11 and people told you, well, that's an X problem. You will have to report the bug over there. And you ended up with a super sad face because it's never fun to report a bug that is two or three layers above the, the user because the amount of, of the, the kind of language that you're going to have to use is uh, very often, well, a sort of language that you as an end user are not really comfortable with. Even I, if I had to report a bug to the X server, I would have problems explaining what exactly is is wrong because people over there are very comfortable with the concept of the X11 business and all, but um, me, not so much, even if I have been using it and in different ways developing on top of it for the last 15 years. Now, in, 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 in Wayland, we have these... Um, We have this uh, possibility of of deciding over the, what kind of things can happen, um, and this gives us this uh, in this way. We uh, plasma and queen ultimately become the uh, interacting uh, agent uh, for for 
bug reports and for, for users. And we get to implement whatever our users find important, right? For example, if we see that a lot of users are using Wacom tablets, then we implement Wacom tablets. Our, our users will have Wacom tablets. We won't have to make sure that we stop working on Plasma, we move to X11 and work on an implementation that admittedly would work for everyone. And that was also very powerful of X11. But it was also a different code base that we were not all that uh, familiar with. And actually, it showed in, in several times in uh, our, our story. Uh, another very important uh, aspect of this would be hardware support. Uh, when we think about Plasma, again, as a product, we need to make sure that uh, everything works from uh, a very low level, right? And being able to put it on whatever device we're working on. Uh, for example, Plasma Mobile has been uh, working on, on Wayland since the very beginning. And that's very related to this, right? As soon as we get to have OpenGL working on the device, we can run a Wayland on, on top, a Queen on top, and start running the applications exactly like we're used to on, on a normal Linux system, unlike uh, on X11, where we would have to see why it's not working over there or what are the different interfaces that we should be familiar with over there. So like I said, what is Wayland? Wayland is a set of protocols that we will use to communicate between each uh, client and, and the compositor and, and vice versa. So the compositor will be able to tell things to the clients and on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And the clients will also be able to tell the compositor anything that they um, feel like. These protocols are, are specified in an XML uh, code very similar to this one. I mean, you could imp imp implement it at a lower level, but nobody really does that. Um, these XML files uh, are often standardized. So there are uh, several protocols that are very important to all of us. And all of these uh, are implemented by any compositor. They should be implemented by us, as well as Matter and uh, Western, et cetera. In fact, to standardize a uh, protocol to make it unstable, we um, required to for it to be implemented in one of those compositors, for it to be stable and well standard, uh, it needs to be implemented for at least a couple of them. And then it's then when you see that if something is stable and there, well, you get to use it and the clients will start implementing. These protocols need to be implemented on both ends. They need to be implemented in Quinn. So Quinn, when a client tells them about well, potato in this case, but it could be, for example, the tablet Wacom tablet case I was talking about earlier. You know, those with a with a pen that you can work on, or or so. Um, you implement it, and then clients who understand this protocol will be able to take an action in in that in this regard. Um, so, clients have to implement it as well. They can do it on their own, or more generally, the, the framework, whichever they're using, should implement it, be it GTK, Qt, or uh, I don't know, SDL, whatever. To make it a bit simpler, uh, Qt has this uh, uh, tool called Qt Wayland Scanner that generates C++ code from the XML file. Uh, and if you use the right argument, you will generate the server side or the client side, so we can um, uh, start implementing it without a lot of problems. Well, I guess I had um, I had emojis here as well, but here I was talking about which are the relevant repositories. So they are Queen. So if you go to invent.kdotorg, you can look for Queen, uh, which is well the component I'm talking about, the compositor that talks to both the graphics card and the keyboards and all of those and each of the clients. Then there's Wayland, which is a KDE framework that is intended uh, to implement a lot of the client uh, protocols so that if you need to use it from an application, you can use a class that is already prepared for you to use instead of having to do the, the whole uh, interfacing with Wayland, which is a bit fiddly sometimes. There's also Wayland server which is more or less the same, but for the server side, this one is, is fairly new. We started uh, with it at Plasma 519, I think, but it's helping us uh, 
to be able to um, develop it a bit quicker. There's K1L inter integration, which is um, a component that sits in, in the background. And whenever an application loads the plugin, because it needs something that is dependent on the on the uh, on, on Wayland or X11. Well, over there we have the Wayland integration, and then Qt Wayland, which is part of Qt5, and it will be Qt6 hopefully, where um, you will see uh, the the code that actually is sending from your application into. that will be sending your application events into Quain and back. All right, uh, I think that the next slide has the same problem. Bah, sorry about that. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, three main uh, relevant parts of Quinn, so that if you start looking at this uh, super big uh, code base, you don't get too overwhelmed. First would be the effects. Effects should work uh, both on, on X11 and Wayland. It's a standard interface somewhat that you can implement uh, a bit of code that uh, can be enabled and disabled and it can perform one uh, task right a good example for this would be the screenshot uh, screenshot effect uh, it's not what we would think of an effect generally but uh, but it's implemented because it has access to everything we're drawing it has access to um, Dbus, for example, which is how uh, we've reached there. So it's done. You can go to queen slash effects and you will find most of them, at least the ones that we're shipping. Then <clears throat> well, we have uh, the plugin slash platforms directory. That's a, an important one as well. That's where we do the communication between queen and all of its information into our either graphics card or whatever output there is, we have several of them. DRM is the one that will be taking care of the graphics card. The other one will be um, Wayland, for example, which is if you run Quinn on your on your system, you will get um, a window with a Quinn inside, which is very useful to develop on. And you will find that in uh, plugins, platforms, uh, Wayland. Now, um, Queen is a very weird project to start working on. And I figured that it would be useful, uh, well, not only to do this talk for today, but also to give some tips for you to get started. Uh, first, uh, I would suggest um, to start looking into running it uh, into a window instead of doing a change and restarting your session. Because, well, uh, one has to uh, remember that when Qu uh, Queen Wayland uh, crashes because something went wrong, uh, you lose everything that you were doing so far, which is actually, by the way, something that we are working on, but it's not uh, ready yet. Hopefully, it will be soon. Uh, but as is to develop it, is it's a bit cumbersome. So you you can uh, use a line like this one. Uh, let me dissect it a bit a little bit. First, you see the debug run session. This is so that uh, the debug calls we're doing doesn't don't hit with the ones that for the session we're already doing because something will get replaced and it gets a bit weird. By the way, this also applies. The, this debug run session also applies to running Quint's uh, tests. Then we run the executable, and then we say exit with session and then console so that this queen starts with a console so that you can start on our process or do something interesting over there. And then we specify which uh, a socket. So when we specify this socket, uh, we call it academy. You can call it uh, potato if you, you want. But the important thing is that it's not the, the, the socket that the queen is using right now, it's just a different one. Something also quite important is that since it's such a big code and everything is so interconnected, one needs to sit down first and see what the right place to implement everything is. Um, it's, it's very fine if you join into the communication communication channels we have around and ask us, but I think it's useful to sit down for a second and implement it. Otherwise, it's something that we will end up discussing on the merge request. So, well, there's that. Using the window mode, like I said, very important. Having a crash over there will be much easier to debug. 
you will get to use then Valgrin, GDB, everything that Millian said on the on the training, if you were there, uh, can be used over there as well. Wayland well, debug, it's a, an environment variable that if you run your process with, starts outputting all of the communication that the client is having with a compositor. That's also very useful. You can do it on the compositor as well. So you will get everything that actually is being discussed. Um, it's, it's very verbose. So you will want to use it with grab or something along the lines. But yeah. And if you need to especially debug something in DRM, DRM you want to get to uh, debug it from from a windowed mode because DRM is the thing that talks to the graphics card. So you will actually have to. Uh, connect to it, uh, then I just try to use it as a last resort. And then I have to do it from another uh, computer through SSH or something along the lines. You can read uh, this blog post I wrote that explains some some tricks about how to do it uh, a bit easier using Tmugs and all. If you have any questions, because it's a bit weird overall, you can definitely ask me. Now. Uh, if you have any questions about something you would like to implement or work on, you can send uh, an email to the either Plasma Devel if it's something more wider, to Queen uh, mailing list if it's something more specific. Also, it's perfectly fine if you get it wrong. Just send it to either, and uh, we will help you either way. There's also two uh, matrix less IRC channels that you can uh, find us and work with us. There's uh, Hash Queen and Hash Plasma. Um, you will find several developers of either projects over there. Uh, that's what I wanted to talk about. If you have any questions, I'll be more than glad to say I don't know the answer. Thank you, Alej. Big applause in the chat. There has been a lot of talk going on, mostly joking, but there is one question. Let's see. And that is, oh, there's a second question popping up. Good. We have three minutes. That should just work. Uh, Quinn, as I know and learned, uh, has a big effect on the overall user experience. But it seems like you need to be a pretty experienced programmer to contribute. What can designers and less experienced programmers do to participate in Quinn's development, especially for Wayland? Ever since I joined the project, I have tried to uh, make it easier. I've been new to Quinn as well, and I actually was quite recently, despite my experience in KDE. So if it's hard, it's not on purpose. It's a very old code base, and that also doesn't help. But there's been uh, a lot of work that has been done, not only by me, but by Vlad and David and many others, which, uh, well, little by little, make the whole business a bit a bit simpler and happier. I hope that this helps. If you, fi if you find something specifically that is complex and cumbersome for you, tell us. And we will try to either tell you what our experience says or, well, try to help you fix it. In the end, by the way, I mentioned David and Vlad and myself and Mevan, who did the talk the other day. All of us are actually quite new to Queen. And maybe like three or four years ago, none of us had touched it. So we are kind of all on the same boat over there. So be brave, everybody. Just try it, break it, and then repair it again. <laughs> All right, second question, adding to the previous. OK, is there something like junior jobs? The merge requests I see seem to implement some complicated specification. <laughs> well, that's a bit of um, an open question. Uh, there might be junior jobs. I haven't created any junior job myself. But uh, I have seen junior jobs uh, all over the place, so there might be. If you want a task, you can also reach out to us and say, I want to do Quinn things, and we will show you all of the open tasks that we have. There's a lot of uh, stuff going on on Fabricator as well with uh, future plans. Um, actually, there's a whole lot of stuff to, to, to be done, right? Especially in graphics, there's new technologies every day that keep popping up. Um, I don't know, color management and these uh, weird HDR and their 30 bit uh, color spaces. All of these needs uh, somebody to, to look into and sit down and think. Actually, one special thing about Queen is that uh, it probably needs more sitting down and thinking than many other parts of, of the KDE code base. But then it's, it's so much more rewarding than 
I mean, it's not about adding a feature in this corner. It's something that will end up having an impact overall the usability of, of the process. So it's also quite engaging, I think, for, for a hacker as well, something that is doing.